Night of University Kamis 9 Juni 2022 dimulai Menyanyikan lagu Indonesia Raya Hadirin dimohon berdiri Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji, Profesor Dr. Agung Damar Shakti, SPI DEA, Wakil Rektor 1 dan Wakil Rektor 2, Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. Yang kami hormati, Dekan Fakultas Teknik, Dekan Fakultas Ilmu Kelautan dan Perikanan, Dekan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan, Dekan Fakultas Ekonomi, Dekan Fakultas Ilmu Sosial dan Ilmu Politik Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. Yang kami hormati, Kepala Biro Akademik Kemahasiswaan dan Kerjasama, Kepala Biro Umum Perencanaan dan Keuangan, Ketua Lembaga Penelitian Pengabdian kepada Masyarakat dan Penjaminan Mutu Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. Yang kami hormati, Ketua Pusat Inkubator Bisnis Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. Yang kami hormati, para pemateri kuliah umum dan para tamu undangan yang berbahagia. Demi kelancaran acara kita pada hari ini, marilah bersama-sama kita berdoa kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala, Tuhan Yang Maha Esa. Doa yang akan dipimpin oleh Ustaz Maulida kepada Bapak kami silahkan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, Demi hikmatnya acara kita pada siang hari ini Saya akan Kemudian kita berdoa kepada Tuhan Yang Maha Esa Yang akan saya apa Pimpin ataupun Saya uh, Pandu dalam Bahasa Islam Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Hamdan syakirin hamdan na'imin Hamdan yaufi'in 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 
Ya Rabbana lakal hamdu kama yang bagi li jagal ujih kawajim sultanik Allahumma salim wa salim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha ila anta halaktani wa anabduka wa anallah dika wa dika mastatoktu A'udzubika misyari masana tu abu laka bini matika alaiya wa abu bizambi Faghfir li fa'inna hu la yafiru junubah illa anta Allahumma inna nas'alu karido kawal jannah wa na'udzubika misyagotika wa nar Allahumma inna nas'aluka salamatan fit din wa afiatan fil jasad wa ziratan fil ilmi wa barakatan fi rizqi wa tawbatan qablal maut wa rahmatan indal maut wa maghfiratan ba'dal maut Allahumma hawin alaina fi syakaratil maut wa najata minan nar wa fa indal hisab rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaitan aw hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab rabbana zalamna anfusana wa lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna rabbana kunanna minal khasirin Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa kina azaban nar Sallallahu alaihi sayyidina Muhammad wa alaihi sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Taqabalullah minkum Acara selanjutnya Sambutan oleh Rektor Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji, Profesor Dr. Agung Damar Shakti, SPI DEA. Kepada Bapak, kami silahkan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Apa tanda sebatang kayu Hilir hanyut dari kehulu Apa tanda cendekia Melayu Belum bicara berpantun dahulu uh, Yang saya hormati Dan saya banggakan Area Manager BSI Batam Bapak Ega Gardewa Yang saya hormati Direktur TV Tanjung Pinang Ibu Santi yang saya hormati Direktur CV Citra Sari, Ibu Kartika Kusuma Stuti. Yang saya hormati Kepala RRI Tanjung Binang yang dipakai oleh Pak Ananta. Yang saya hormati Ketua Koperasi Bahtera Gurindam yang diwakili oleh eh, Pak Ahirman ya. Kemudian Komisaris PT Pulau Nikoi dan PT Pulau Cempeda. Mr. Andrew, kemudian Direktur Al, -Ah Al Ahmadi Entrepreneur Center, Ibu Lisha. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you all, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. We are very happy today to welcome you all, yeah, our partners. Today we are going to sign the, our MOU. It's very important because this MOU will indicate that Umrah is very close with the, our stakeholder. And this, the importance of the relationship, the partnership, is to increase our potential to produce many entrepreneurs from Umrah. But from Umbra, we call marine planners. Why? Because one of the, our strategic program, which is included in our vision, Satu Gurindam, one of the strategic program is namely Mari Sociopreneurship. So we want to engage and to push the, our student uh, to become the entrepreneurs by using any potential marine and maritime resources in our uh, Riau Island province. And for one, the ultimate goal, which is for the, to get the societal impact for our community, our culture, by doing the commerce. I think this is very in line with the talk Andrew Vernon Dixon today, yeah? Uh, with 
how to conserve our nature and then using the community to work together and then uh, to use the our heritage and culture for the commerce. That is a very uh, good topic today that uh, Andrew will share us and see some light about how to manage uh, and to uh, to make the valorization of the, our natural resources for our uh, welfare. So when we talk about the entrepreneurs, uh, C4, yeah? So uh, my student here, uh, we conduct this public lecture and also the activity for the signature of MOU uh, in the hybrid uh, model. So some of our student is here with us and another is in online. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, Andrew will give the talk about the sustainability and the for she, yeah? And for the entrepreneurs, they have to get the uh, the 21 century competency, which is also for C. Yeah. The entrepreneurs should have the capacity to, to, to should have the critical thinking, yeah, critical thinking uh, that uh, and also problem solving, of course. Yeah. Another C is the entrepreneurs should have the creativity and innovation, of course. So, Ibu uh, from, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, today, uh, many, many students uh, of Umbra, they work with the enterprise you have now uh, in terms of the internship and any program. Uh, in order to increase also the number of the small scale enterprises in Rio and Provence. So with us, we have BSE uh, that may help us to, to strengthen in the number of the, and to increase the number of the small scale enterprises by conducting the entrepreneur. So I think it's a very uh, good uh, idea. Today, we will hear from Andrew uh, Dixon about the sustainability, and the uh, four C's. And another speaker, which is uh, Oliver Fernand Dixon, yeah? uh, he had just graduated from the University of Sydney, and, they, and he will share you about his experiences in, during his study in uh, Australia, and perhaps it can uh, inspire you uh, how to be the good uh, student and uh, try to make a vision for your life uh, in the future. Yeah, with a further ado, I think uh, uh, I am really happy yeah, to be here with you and hopefully uh, anybody will get also the benefit in this public lecture. And before the public lecture, of course, uh, we have the ceremony for the uh, MOU signature from our Mitra, our partners. It's very, very important for us. And again, Bapak, Ibu Sekalian, so I think so, uh, we have to focus on the Mari social partnerships. Yeah, I think that our collaboration can can go through in this uh, strategic program, Mari social partnership, by using the marine and maritime resources. Because you know, today UN United Nations declare what we call the UN decade for science. Uh, I mean, uh, we need the the science for the ocean. We uh, we won, yeah? So I think the help from your hand should go directly to increase our capacity building by conducting the research and science, by increasing our capacity building. And so all the activity hopefully can be go through more specifically to increase our capacity, strengthen our capacity, research capacity, and then to increase the uh, innovation ecosystem in Umbra. So uh, please, uh, any program should be go to the maritime related field. Yeah, I think it's very uh, good if we uh, mention it that uh, this is very important for us. Uh, then, you know, also just for information, maybe for the student, uh, our budget for the R&D is only 0. 31 percent 
uh, compared to our GDP. So it's very different with the Singapore, Malaysia, and so on. So it's very small. And w one of the reason is because the contribution of the private sector is only less than 20 percent. So I think this is a very good example. If we can make some alternates, yeah, uh, in United States or in Singapore, this is inversely. Uh, public sector will contribute more than 80 percent for the research and development uh, budget, yeah, in the country. But in Indonesia, is less. Hopefully, with the at least seven or eight, uh, where we, I will open this Korea uh, Umum and uh, MOU signature from our Mitra. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> the last but not least, again, not a pantun, of course, but I am thinking. Terbang tinggi si burung elang, elang laut menuju awan. Kerjasama harus terus digalakan untuk sinergi yang lebih berkelanjutan. <laughs> ya sudah satu aja. <laughs> Baik, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Acara selanjutnya, sambutan oleh mitra yang diwakili oleh Bank Syariah Indonesia, area manajer Batam, Bapak Eka Gardewa. Kepada Bapak, kami silahkan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, puji syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu wa taala yang telah melimpahkan nikmat kepada kita sehingga kita semua diberikan kesempatan dan kesehatan sehingga bisa menghadiri uh, kegiatan pada hari ini dalam kondisi yang sehat dan berbahagia. Tak lupa salawat dan salam kita panjatkan kehadiran junjungan Nabi Besar Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dan mudah-mudahan kita bisa mendapatkan syafaat beliau di akhir di yomil akhir nanti. Terima kasih atas kesempatan yang diberikan uh, kepada kami Pak Rektor untuk memberikan kata sambutan. Uh, mohon maaf saya tidak bisa membuka dengan pantun. Uh, nama saya Ega Gardewa, saya area manager dari Bat uh, BSI Batam. Uh, baru tiga bulan saya bertugas di Kepri ini dan uh, hari ini menjadi hari yang sangat berbahagia buat saya karena diberikan kesempatan untuk hadir dan menandatangani kerjasama dengan Umrah uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian adik-adik Bank Syariah Indonesia itu berdiri pada, tahu, uh, pada tanggal 1 Februari 2021 dan merupakan gabungan dari tiga bank syariah besar dari bank syariah mandiri, bank, bank BRI syariah dan bank BNI syariah nah ketiganya bergabung tujuannya apa? untuk membangun dan mengembangkan perbankan syariah yang lebih besar lagi dan bisa berdaya uh, saing dengan luar karena dengan negara Indonesia sebagai sebuah negara yang memiliki penduduk muslim terbesar kita belum memiliki bank syariah yang sangat besar. Jadi jangan sampai kita kemudian tertinggal dengan negara-negara yang lain. Dan uh, salah satu uh, tugas dari bank syariah Indonesia adadalah mengembangkan bisnis-bisnis uh, uh, baik itu kecil maupun bisnis uh, menengah, mikro dan SME. Dan pada kesempatan ini dengan kerjasama yang akan dilakukan dengan uh, Umrah, dan kita akan bisa berpartner untuk memberikan pembiayaan kepada mitra-mitra kelolaan, binaan dari Umrah. Nah itu mudah-mudahan juga bisa meningkatkan bisnis dan perkembangan ekonomi di daerah Tanjung Pinang. Dan kami berharap bahwa kerjasama ini bisa terus berjalan dan bisa memberikan kebermanfaatan bagi masyarakat dan Umrah tentunya. 
Itu mungkin sambutan dari saya. Terima kasih. Bilahi topik wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baiklah hadirin yang berbahagia, selanjutnya kita masuk pada inti acara yaitu penanda tanganan naskah kerjasama Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji dan Mitra dalam pengembangan Mari Sosiopreneurship atau MOU dan MOA dengan PT Pulau Nikoi, PT Pulau Cempedak, Bank Syariah Indonesia, LPP RRI Tanjung Pinang, TV Tanjung Pinang, Al Ahmadi Entrepreneurship Center, CV Citra Sari Snack and Catering, dan Koperasi Bahtera Gurindam. Kami minta kesediaannya kembali kepada Bapak Rektor Umrah, Bapak dan Ibu Pimpinan Mitra untuk mengambil tempat. Silahkan untuk yang pertama, PT Pulau Nikoi dan PT Pulau Cempeda. Selanjutnya, Bank Syariah Indonesia.
Baik, selanjutnya dari LPP RRI Tanjung Pinang. Baik, dilanjutkan. Al Ahmadi Entrepreneurship Center. Baik, dilanjutkan dengan TV Tanjung Pinang. Selanjutnya CV Citra Sari Snack and Catering. Dan yang terakhir, Koperasi Bahtera Gurindam.
Kami mohon kepada Bapak Ibu untuk tetap berada di tempat. Selanjutnya, penyerahan plakat oleh Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji kepada para mitra oleh Rektor Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. Dan dilanjutkan dengan sesi foto bersama. Terima kasih kepada Bapak dan Ibu, disilahkan kembali ke tempat. Acara penandatanganan naskah kerjasama Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji dan Mitra dalam pengembangan Mari Sosioprenership telah selesai. Hadirin yang berbahagia, marilah kita masuki rangkaian acara selanjutnya, yaitu kuliah umum dengan tema Sustainability and the Forces, Conservation, Community, Culture and Commerce, dan Sharing Knowledge, Focus and How You Can Expand Your Studies Outside of University. Dengan narasumber yang pertama, founder dan owner PT Pulau Nikoi dan Cempedak, Mr. Andrew Vernon Dixon, dan narasumber yang kedua, alumni University of Sydney, Australia, Mr. Oliver Vernon Dixon. Dengan moderator, Bapak Boni Irawan, MPD, beliau merupakan dosen Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan, Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji, dan Aksan Sinaraka Shakti, mahasiswa Teknik Informatika. 
Baiklah untuk sesi kuliah umum yang pertama dengan tema Sustainability and the Forces Conservation Community Culture and Commerce yang akan disampaikan oleh Mr. Andrew Vernon Dixon dan akan dipandu oleh moderator Bapak Boni Irawan MPD. Kepada Bapak kami persilahkan. Oh, so beautiful, Penjangan Islands. Its charms will last for generations. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our general lecture session. <laughs> Megah sungguh ekor Garuda, bulu leher panjang bergaris. Jika Pak Rektor pantun bahasa Indonesia, kita hajar pantun bahasa Inggris. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello and welcome everyone to our general lecture session. My name is Boni Irawan and I will moderate the first session. In the first session, we have a topic here in our hand. The topic is uh, sustainability and four C's. And we have here in front of us an outstanding figure, a businessman, a trained accountant, and a philanthropist. So in short, someone who has earned every right to lecture just about everyone about sustainability and forces. Please give a warm applause for Andrew Vernon Dixon. <laughs> Hello Andrew, how are you today? Okay. Selamat siang. Wow. Selamat siang, Andrew. So, Andrew, just a quick question. Uh, you've run your business in Indonesia for almost 20 years now. So, how good is your Bahasa Indonesia? Um, <laughs> my Bahasa is terrible, I'm sorry to say. Okay. Saya takutnya saya patah-patah lidah berbahasa Inggris. Rupanya beliau pandai berbahasa Indonesia. Maka saya tanya dulu, Bapak dan Ibu. Okay, so uh, before we start our session today, I would like to introduce our uh, guest lecturer. Uh, allow me to uh, highlight a brief curriculum vitae and accomplishment of Andrew Vernon Dixon. Uh, Andrew Vernon Dixon was born in Sydney. He holds a master degree of uh, majoring in economics and accounting from Macquarie University in 1989. After qualifying as a chartered accountant, Andrew then spent the first 20 years of his career working in banking in finance, eventually arriving in Singapore, where he stumbled across the unspoiled beaches and, and islands of nearby Indonesia. Together with some friends, they developed Nikoi Island and then subsequently Chempedak Island as boutique resorts using bamboo and driftwood, and without air conditioning. Working closely with the local communities, they have also established a foundation that has focused on improving education standards in the local villages that impacts the life of 10,000 villagers. Very impressive. So, Pak uh, Rektor, the Honorable Jess, para mahasiswa yang menghadiri di ruangan ini dan di Dari ruangan Zoom, uh, without further ado, I would like to give uh, the time and place to Andrew to deliver his uh, lecture about sustainability and the four C's. Silakan, Pak Andrew. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Thank you, um, Prof. Agong, for inviting us to speak today. It's a great honor. Uh, I'd like to also firstly apologize for my lack of bahasa. Uh, it's always a great embarrassment that I haven't improved my bahasa, so apologies. 
Um, the trouble is my staff all speak very good English and I have never had to learn Bahasa. So um, I'd also now like to thank um, some of the staff that have helped build this relationship with Umrah. It is something we're very proud of. So Pak Mansud, Ibu Riza, uh, Pak Jazlan and others have been very good at building that relationship with Umrah. It's something that we're very proud of. Um, I was going to share some slides, if that's okay. Um, and so is, can the team share, put up the... Okay, thanks very much. I'll just get my notes as well. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're um, very grateful for the support we've received from Umrah over the years, and I hope it's been very beneficial for Umrah as well, and we hope to be able to expand on that collaboration. Today I'm going to talk about a subject that is very close to my heart and that is the subject of sustainability. Uh, if you go to the next slide please. Uh, I think it's always good to begin with a definition. And uh, you'll see up on the screen I've shared a definition that I found on Wikipedia and I'd like you to just take a little bit of time to read that. Um, this this um, definition says in English, sustainability is a societal goal with three dimensions, environment, economic, and social. And Professor Agung touched on this in his opening remarks. It's something that affects all of us and I think as students, it's something that you can take away with you as well. And it's nice to see that Umrah recognises the importance of that, so well done. But what does sustainability mean to all of you? What do you think of sustainability? Does anyone like to give me some words that they think of when they hear the word sustainability? Any, any students like to give me a few words? Ayo, silakan. Can be in Bahasa, or we have a moderator. Here. Yeah, boleh bahasa Indonesia nanti saya terjemahkan. Oli, you give me some. <laughs> the future. Any others? <laughs> Being proud, leaving a legacy behind, is that what you mean? Yeah. Any other students like to give me a few words that mean sustainability? Just, you can yell it out? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, for me, three words about sustainability. Circular, the big circle, okay? Community is another one. And holistic, how we look at the whole world all together. They're my three words. Maybe you want to think about three words, how you look at sustainability. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you can skip this next one and go on. Skip the next, go, yes, and skip. Great. So, an organisation that embodies a lot of these words um, that you've suggested is a group called The Long Run, which we're members of. The Long Run is a collection of small hotels around the world and Nikoi and Chepadak are very proud members of it. The Long Run has developed a framework they call the Four Cs. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, 
or introduce you to. So what are the four C's? The four C's are community, culture, conservation, and commerce. And you'll probably notice that those four words are not very different to what was in the Wikipedia description that I shared at the start. So what I'd like to do now is just discuss each of those four C's and how we've used them, developed them in our business. So if you go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the first is community. In this dimension, we try and address fair working conditions, community relations, social infrastructure, capacity building, and support for small and medium enterprises, SMEs. But that's a long list of big words, but it gives you an idea that there's quite a wide topic under community. It covers a lot, a lot of stakeholders in a community. Some examples of what we've done in our business. We established a savings and loans scheme, like a small bank, for our staff, and that helped reduce borrowing costs and increased savings rates for our staff. In fact, saving rates have doubled. And it's also helped from a business, it's helped us retain staff, which is a good thing. So we're very proud about staff staying with us and not leaving. Another example is we established a Yaya Sun called the Island Foundation. We have today 11 learning centres and we teach over 500 children. And we teach a lot of teachers as well. Uh, the Island Foundation teaches a curriculum that we call Learning for Sustainability. It encourages critical thinking, something that Professor Agung mentioned, creativity, another thing <laughs> Professor Agung mentioned, collaboration, confidence, are the four C's we, we embody in the Island Foundation curriculum. We try and make it fun and interactive for children. And it's very well received. We're very proud of the Island Foundation. So whilst that doesn't have a direct impact on our business, it's, in, it's beneficial for our relationship with the community. Funding for the foundation comes from large companies, our own business, and from our guests. Uh, another example of community work, um, we've spent a lot of time training contractors and staff and giving them new skills and techniques, which means that in the long term there's mutual respect with the local community, with our staff and with suppliers. And we're very proud of that relationship. The second, sorry we can move on to, yes please next, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> okay, so the second of the four C's is culture. And you can see here a description of what we mean by culture. Our world is very culturally diverse, but celebrating those common interests, those common ideals is what nurtures understanding. Respecting differences is very important for our future. We seek to address these issues of cultural heritage, cultural awareness, 
and cultural exchange. Our next slide, please. An example of what we've done is to protect local culture is by creating a semi-annual race of jongs, these beautiful sailing boats. And we've been organising that at Tricora Beach. And this has helped revive cultural pastime. The next slide, please. Another example for us is that we've tried to showcase Indonesian food, makanan. It's something that is um, very important to us and how we can showcase Indonesian food. And this is an example of a dish that we serve in our restaurant and it's very popular with guests. They love it, it's very popular. <laughs> Um, and this is a great opportunity for our staff to talk to our guests about Indonesian culture, Indonesian food. It's a great way to interact. It makes the world smaller. Next slide, please. So the third C is conservation, or conservasi. Conservation is the management of natural resources to ensure the continuity of their supply while maintaining and improving the quality of their diversity and value. Nikoi and Chepadak's commitment to conservation is to ensure that not only the environment is protected, but also that we make efforts to restore the damaged environment by educating employees guests and our local residents. An example is, or some examples are that we've helped protect thousands of turtle hatchlings. We've been working for many years to get a marine protected area along the east coast of Bintan established. And in this regard, we've been working closely with Conservation International, Yayasan Ecology, uh, MMAF, and very importantly, UMRA. And we're very excited with the progress that we've been making. The next slide, please. The fourth C is one that sometimes surprises people and that's commerce. But why is commerce important? Unchecked or unregulated, businesses can have negative impacts. But businesses carried out holistically and sustainably can, on the other hand, be positive contributors. A viable business offers capacity to provide a source of income for the people who depend on it. In addition, it allows for long-term investment back into the other three Cs. This is very important. By investing back into the other three Cs, businesses can help protect their business long-term. Next slide, please. So Nikoi and Chepadak are operated with the main principle that a profitable business is a sustainable business. A profitable business will provide more opportunities for the community, for conservation, and for cultural harmonisation. This benefits all stakeholders in the long run. Most importantly, we have to remember that this is a long journey. You can't do this overnight. But if we do follow the four C's framework, all stakeholders will ultimately benefit. I hope this provides you with a quick introduction to how we run our business 
in a sustainable manner. Please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Andrew. So that was the presentation from Andrew. And we will move on to the next session, which is a discussion, maybe. So uh, attendance of general lecture. This is a discussion forum, which is uh, protected by the sanctity of academic freedom. Yeah. So you can ask and about anything, you have an idea or criticism to how uh, a businessman uh, run their business around Bintan, Bintan Waters. So it, it, feel free to ask, and I will moderate that, that question for you. Yeah. Jadi, adik-adik uh, mahasiswa terutama, jika punya unek-unek pendapat, ide, kritik, saran kepada Pak Andrew, silahkan. Jangan ragu-ragu, jangan takut-takut ya. Karena ini kuliah, maka kalian bebas bertanya apa saja. Silahkan. Yang di rumah juga boleh bertanya melalui fitur Zoom kita. Nanti akan dibantu oleh tim IT. Oke, okay, we have a... Oke, okay, silahkan maju ke depan. Please uh, come forward, maybe to our podium to ask your question. Baik, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Oke baik, uh, terima kasih atas kesempatannya. Perkenalkan nama saya Diki Setiawan. Saya dari Fakultas Ekonomi, uh, mahasiswa semester 6. Nah mungkin pertanyaan sederhana untuk Bapak Andrew. Karena kita lihat pulau kecil itu dengan berbagai macam kearifan. Hal yang menjadi permasalahannya adalah ketika kita ingin mengeksplor pulau, menjadikan sebuah wisata, maka kita tidak har maka kita harus mempertimbangkan penduduk setempat, dan juga tentang bagaimana masalah-masalah di perairan atau di persisir. Salah satu contoh, salah satu contohnya adalah sampah plastik itu sendiri. Jadi bagaimana mungkin dari Bapak untuk mengurangi potensi sampah plastik agar kita juga bisa merestarikan lingkungan sekitar. Selain tadi wisata Pulau Nikoi, untuk bisnis dan juga keuntungan, bagaimana Bapak juga harus memelihara pelestarian lingkungan alam sekitar. Begitu Pak Dari saya. Terima kasih. Thank you. Tepuk tangan dong. Bagus sekali. Masih ada lagi? Silakan, kita tampung dulu aja. Ya, ya. Oh, I will. Uh, okay, you can comment. You can. I will uh, summarize. Summarize the question for you. Okay, why are waiting for the next question? So, Andrew, the first uh, commentator here uh, asked a question of concerns, actually, on how a business operated in a small islands region, uh, which is a, a vulnerable area. Uh, he expressed a concerns about how a business should be run in sustainable ways, and how do you operate to uh, take into account the marine pollution especially plastic pollution and how do you, how do you how what's your approach to community uh, especially the local community because you are operating in a small islands which is uh, still a culturally thick area okay it's a great question thank you very much um, in terms of um, avoiding waste. We try and collect more plastic than we produce. <laughs> so there's less plastic in the ocean than we, if we were not there. Uh, we, we ensure that any uh, sewerage waste septic systems are all um, designed so that they um, do not produce any waste into the ocean. So we very much work in a circular way and we like to think of it as not just minimising 
our impact, but actually having a positive impact. So going beyond any damage. We You're like going to help beyond zero waste. Beyond zero waste. We collect more plastic than we produce. Okay, uh, how about the culture? Approach? The culture, um, well, that's an interesting one. Um, there isn't any villages on, on our island, so there's not... Because it's a remote island? Because... Uninhabited? It's uninhabited, yes. So we try and work with villages in nearby islands and help bring them into the business. So we employ staff, um, we do um, programs with them on conservation, we've tried to educate them on, on conservation, um, we've done beach cleanups, we've helped show them to protect the turtles, we've done a lot of work in, in those areas, yeah? Um, the Jong race is, is, is in a nearby village, those type of things, we do a colic race, uh, in another village, uh, there's, there's quite a few um, examples of. Okay, so I hope that satisfied. Uh, siapa namanya tadi? Mas Mas Dedi ya, ya Pak Dedi Mas Dedi. Uh, jadi itu jawabannya. Uh, and I think uh, I can attest to that answers because uh, as an academia in Umra, uh, I've witnessed my college and. Uh, me, myself, and my students have been involved with uh, this kind of initiatives in around Bintan Islands. So uh, I think uh, most of the uh, resort and hotel business in Bintan has already uh, come forward with a sustainable uh, model of business. So uh, itu ya jawabannya. Silahkan jika masih ada pertanyaan berikutnya. Masih ada, silakan. Kayaknya pada nunggu Oliver nih ya, maju ya. <laughs> silakan jika masih ada pertanyaan. Oke, okay, ibu, silakan ibu. No, we have uh, another one question. Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, perkenalkan saya Widya dari RRI Tanjung Pinang. Ya, tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh Pak Andrew beberapa uh, mungkin instrumen dari uh, topik kita hari ini yaitu conservation, community, culture, and commerce gitu ya. Nah, saya ingin menyoroti masalah community atau kemasyarakatan. Nah, Pak Andrew ini kan uh, pengusaha ya yang uh, mungkin uh, berada di Bintan. Uh, terus Tentu uh, pengusaha seperti Pak Andrew ini memberikan kontribusi bagi Pulau Bintan ya. Nah sekarang dari selain dari masalah sumber daya alam yang tentunya pasti terjaga ya dengan keberadaan Pak Andrew dan teman-teman. Nah kalau untuk masalah sumber daya manusianya bagaimana nih? Uh, keberadaan Pak Andrew uh, memberdayakan sumber daya-sumber daya manusia yang ada di Pulau Bintan dan juga sekarang kerjasama dengan Umrah gimana nanti menyer, apakah mau menyerap lulusan-lulusan uh, dari Umrah ini untuk bisa bekerja sama dengan Pak Andrew dan teman-teman lainnya. Demikian, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, terima kasih Ibu. Thank you. So, uh, this time around, the question is about community. So, uh, how about, uh, how was your policy on empowering the community around your Uh, operation base. So you've, you've talked a lot about how you uh, work on conservation and, uh, and then on the natural aspect of Bintan Island, but how about the, its people? What have you done to empower Bintan Island's people? Okay, great question. Thank you. Um, okay, firstly, uh, all of our staff are Indonesian. All of our staff. Um, my, I, I'm not an employee, I'm employee in Singapore, but my, all the staff from general manager all the way down are Indonesian. So there's a lot of empowerment already for our staff to run it. I want them to run the place. We invest a lot in staff training. Staff training is a big thing. We like to educate our staff. Um, our, 
we've only been in business 15 years and our average employees worked for eight years. It's so a low turnaround rate. Is, we have a very low turn. We lose less than 10% of staff every year. Uh, through the pandemic, we continued to pay all of our permanent staff, not the full wage, but like, <laughs> that we, we managed to keep them all on. Um, a big, Im a big um, a thing we do a lot of work with is through the Island Foundation, and that is something that um, is very close to my heart. I sit on the board. Um, we've brought external donors for that. We now teach over 500 children every year, uh, and we teach, we taught over 1,000 teachers. So we run teacher training workshops. Now that's all on Bintan, that's not on, not on the islands. Um, so the community's uh, very important for us. So yeah, thank you for the question. Baik, terima kasih Pak Andrew. Baik, gitu ya Ibu jawabannya. Apakah masih ada pertanyaan lagi? Mungkin yang dari peserta online, jika ada. Belum ya. Apakah masih ada pertanyaan? Ya, terakhir mungkin ya. This is our last. Uh, silakan siapa tadi? Ah ya, maju aja. Mahasiswa Umrah. Uh, okay, permission to introduce myself. My name is Ginyung Padita from the Department of Public Administration from the Faculty of Social Science and Political Science for the term of the first section, which discuss four Cs, conservation, community, culture, and commerce. I'm allowed to ask, I have an idea, then I have conferred to my entrepreneurship lectures, then my friends and I really want to make sea or shin, atau yang dikenal dengan sebagai bulu babi, and uh, I will conservation and manage because there are so many sea urchin very high benefit and prices. From sea urchins, kita uh, memiliki keuntungan semua pemangku kepentingan yang dijelaskan oleh Mr. Andrew tadi. Uh, we, bought, we bought benefit stakeholder from fishermen who look for our material from us as students who manage them and even Nikoi as a community that help Indonesian natural resources become global. Then can Nikoi himself be able to accommodate or help us to express our ideas? Dapatkah Nikoi uh, sebagai akomodasi dari kami sebagai mahasiswa untuk menuangkan ide-ide uh, kami? Thank you. Tadi bulu babi ya? Oke, okay, makasih. Tepuk tangan untuk temannya dong. So, uh, great English, by the way. Great English, very fluent. So, uh, our young girl here, here asking about uh, she, she, she are about to, she is about to engage in a project in echinodermata uh, conservation. Conservation. Uh, conservation. Yeah. Uh, so, she asked. Uh, What's the Nikoi Islands policy in to maybe accommodate the students' project in scientific, uh, in scientific projects especially? Is well, there? Hmm? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, we were talking about that um, just before and um, we are very keen to try and work with students to visit the island or use the, get access to the island to, to study or use it as a research site. We've done, um, in the past, we've had students come and visit, and there's research projects done on it. We love, love that, so we're very happy to work with you. We just need to know when people want to come and to work out a plan as to how that happens. But you should talk to your administrator, and if you, would, if you have a project, um, we're very keen to work with you and support you. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. That's uh, very assuring for our students. I think there are a lot of our students that 
uh, have something as, as a project in their minds that they would like to carry out in, in the in Nikoi Islands. Okay, so for the last questions, we have uh, questions in, in our Zoom platform. Okay, so I might need to stand. Okay, so this question is about uh, revolusi mental, mental revolution about how to change the mindset of the people regarding the sustainability. You know, in general, people uh, love the easy ways. We love to, to, to throw away our trash uh, and let it uh, be someone else's problem. So. Do you have any strategy or ideas on how to uh, improve this mindset so we can have a, a broader project that involves a lot of people with the same mindset here? Yeah, another great question. <laughs> uh, I like to, well, I, I've gone through lots of different ways of thinking about this myself, so it's not an easy one. Um, I like to lead by example. Um, if I see a piece of plastic on the ground, I pick it up. Um, I try and pick it up in front of someone. If someone throws it down there, I point it out and I'll say, you dropped a piece of plastic. Or, you know, what about doing things differently? I try and challenge people. You've got to have a conversation with people. Um, I get upset about it sometimes and what I try and do, I've got to try and step back from it. You, you don't want to get angry with people, you've got to try and educate people. And I think trying to lead by example is the best way, that's a way to educate. But it's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of work we have to do on that, so yeah, not easy. Yeah, I can attest to that because I teach conservation in my courses and that's been a, a very big questions to answer. Uh, so leading by example, building characters, so that's your answer, right, Andrew? I think also you can show people that there's a better way. Um, you know, that we, if we use and reuse materials again, uh, we get, you know, it's nicer to eat off a china plate than it is to eat off a plastic plate. Involves a little bit of work to, to wash it, but it's so much nicer, it's more pleasant, right? So I think we've got to go back to thinking. I like to think how my grandmother grew up. She used to collect all the glass bottles afterwards and make jam and put them in. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, the last takeaway point here is that don't alienate, don't alienate the people that you try to help. Jadi walaupun kita terdidik gitu ya, mahasiswa dari perguruan tinggi jangan sampai ngerasa lebih hebat dari orang-orang di sekitar kita dari warga-warga kita karena cara hidup mereka yang masih seperti itu bukan berarti kita lebih hebat lebih lebih luhur gitu ya jangan malah nanti karena salah satu kelemahan aktivis ya dalam tanda kutik yang 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 sering saya lihat adalah ketika jadi aktivis itu aduh merasa paling hebat sehingga Akhirnya orang itu malah menjauh gitu. Akhirnya yang peduli lingkungan tuh cuma dia-dia aja karena orang benci dengan si aktivisnya gitu. Itu yang dibilang oleh Andrew salah satunya. Oke, okay, I think that's uh, conclude our discussion session today. That's been very uh, fruitful. Andrew, it's nice to uh, listen to your lecture and having a discussion with you. Well, thank you for moderating that so well. Yeah, your English is very good as well, I'm embarrassed. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attention. So, please let the old man's uh, <laughs> take off the, the, the stage because all the young guys will come after us. So, please stay tuned. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Demikianlah sesi kuliah umum pertama. Rangkaian acara selanjutnya yaitu sharing knowledge dengan tema fokus on how you can expand your studies outside of university yang akan disampaikan oleh Mr. Oliver Vernon Dixon dan moderator Aksan Sinaraka Sakti. Kepada saudara kami silahkan. Satu, dua, halo Baik, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Selamat sore yeah, Selamat sore and good afternoon everyone uh, Before we start, I would like to first introduce myself quickly My name is Aksan Sina Raka Shakti uh, University student at Universitas Maritim Rajali Haji Uh, and in this second section of the general lecture, uh, the topic is about uh, focusing on how you can expand your studies outside of university or uh, in Indonesia. Uh, bagaimana cara untuk memperluas studi kita di luar dari ruang lingkup universitas? Yeah? And uh, sitting beside us today is uh, Oliver Fernand Dixon, a graduate from uh, University of Sydney uh, at Bachelor of Design Computing. Uh, nothing else given to me, so uh, maybe you can talk a bit about yourself later. Eh? Okay, um, I guess you can start your speak, no? Okay, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here and um, speaking to everyone. So yeah, I have a little bit of a speech and then um, we can do some questions after. So yeah, it really is a pleasure to be here today. Um, it's an honor to be speaking to so many young, smart people. Uh, and I feel a little unqualified because I just graduated about a year ago. Um, so I'm sure many of you in the room have much more exciting prospects than me, but I'm exciting to talk to you. Um, so I'm gonna try to speak a bit more from personal experience um, rather than sort of telling you what I think you should do. I'm gonna talk about what's worked for me Um, and perhaps you can take something away from that. So yeah, my name is Oliver, uh, and I recently graduated from the University of Sydney. I studied a Bachelor of Design Computing. So that's a very broad, what we say, multidisciplinary degree. Um, it allowed me to focus on a breadth of subjects. Um, and university for me was one of the most exciting times of my life. I met amazing people. Um, I had some success, but I also had a lot of failure. Um, but most importantly, what happened was I believe I grew as a person. And it goes back to this whole idea of how you can expand and grow beyond university. And who knows what that exactly means, growing beyond that. Um, but for me, I felt better prepared uh, to face the big wide world that exists beyond university. So today I want to share with, how, share with you guys how I best believe you can grow. The key word being beyond. Um, a high standard of university coursework is really important. So I'm not saying don't get good grades because that's like the most important thing. Because good grades set up a foundation for which you can grow beyond that. And you can add your own sort of unique value beyond university. Um, and that's tricky because growing beyond university, it takes um, personal responsibility and that can be scary. Um, I think we can overcome that fear by first reframing this idea of growth. Um, and I think typically when we think about growth, we think about it in a vertical sense, like a plant growing up. But in reality, growth is rarely like that. Growth is like a twisting and turning path. And it is in those times where you face those twisting and turning paths and that adversity where you get, gain some strength and learn some things. 
and it offers the most opportunity for growth. So I could stand here and I could rattle off a list of sort of 20 best tips for achieve growth, but you'd probably leave here only remembering maybe one or two. So instead, I've tried to condense my experience um, into two simple words or concepts uh, that I believe have helped me embrace uh, that path of growth beyond university. So I'll jump straight into my first word or topic, uh, which is this idea of to network. <clears throat> so any computing students out here might be suddenly waking up, but I don't mean network in the context of servers or computers. Um, when I say network, I mean it's to interact with others in a way in which you exchange information and develop. It can be done with anyone, anywhere. Today is a great context for networking. Um, you want to, uh, I think, and a really important thing to remember when we network, you want to be trying to add value when you interact with people. Be value adding. Um, because that's the best way you're ultimately going to build genuine um, and rewarding connections. So this might seem very straightforward. Yet most people use networking for the sole purpose of sort of getting ahead and advancing themselves. That's not networking, that's simply being selfish. Um, sure, it might work for the short term. Oh, okay. There we go, that's better. Too tall, thank you. Um, sure, it might work for the short term, um, but you'll quickly learn that's an example of what we say unsustainable growth. Um, it's important to understand when we network, it's actually a two-way street. You should be sharing resources collaboratively. So how can you get started with this idea of networking? Firstly, you can, should consider what can you give? What are you passionate about? What are you interested in and what, how can you share that? Um, and then secondly, you should consider where can you grow? Um, and I think that order is really important because if you approach it is where can I grow first, you'll end up falling into a trap of thinking when you network with people, it's simply what do I want? Where can I get ahead? It's not a I want, it's where can I grow? Practically, there are a number of channels over which you can network. Um, you could grab coffee with someone, you, you could strike up a conversation in a lecture. Uh, but one platform that's worked really well for me is LinkedIn. Maybe some of you guys have heard of it, or I'm sure many of you are already using it. But LinkedIn is a fantastic platform, and for any like soon-to-be graduates, you should all have LinkedIn. I um, mean, you should have a platform on LinkedIn um, in which you can connect with people, um, explore jobs, companies, um, and build a network. It's a really great tool. Um, so sort of that wraps up this first concept of networking. And I hope that's been somewhat helpful. Just think of that in the context of firstly considering what can you give and where can you grow. So the next concept I want to introduce is this idea that you should create. And this is the one I'm really passionate about. University offers plenty of opportunities um, to be creative. However, this is most often framed um, within a certain exam criteria or marking guidelines. Um, naturally, these requirement uh, guidelines and criteria sort of limit you to a certain degree. Rarely will you be told in university, um, you just go out and do whatever you want and we'll mark it. It simply wouldn't work. Um, and that's not sort of dismissing those marking criteria and guidelines because they're really important. Uh, to make university equitable. Um, but you should be creating whatever you want outside of university. Make things, break things, and create things. And I use such a vague word as things because it really could be anything. The point being there is no criteria, there are no guidelines. Um, allow yourself to be creative beyond limitations. So I'll give you something, an example of something I created. Um, it's quite a niche example. So when I was at university, I used to buy and sell things online on like a site like Tokopedia um, to make some money. Um, and I used to, um, I sort of grew frustrated using this because I would always miss out on the best deals or bargains. Um, so over the university break, I had some free time and I coded up um, a web application, a scraping thing that could send me notifications for new items. Um, and it saved me a lot of time and I ended up making quite a bit more money from it. And eventually I commercialized it and I start, set it up as a startup business. 
While I didn't make much money and eventually I shut it down, I still considered this a success because what I did was I created something and it was very random um, and I did it to my own accord. And while it somewhat failed, that's good because in the process I learned a lot. So I urge you to take your crazy ideas into reality. They don't even have to be that crazy. It shouldn't take much energy or resources or money because most of the time what you make is going to break. It's going to fail. But that's fantastic because every time you're going to learn a uniquely individual experience or lesson that you could have never learned within university. Um, practically, the example I gave before is probably not great because it's framed as something digital. And I think when I say create something, I think maybe more like 75% of you will think of something digital like an app because we want to create the next big sort of tech thing. But the danger of that um, is when something breaks online in a digital sense, it's easy to delete it, to make it disappear. So the consequence is diminished. So I actually urge you to create something tangible, something physical, um, because when it breaks, you can see how it breaks more clearly. So build a chair that you can't sit in. It, it doesn't have to have a purpose. Just try and create something, because there are no rules, there are no guidelines. Just make it, make, break, uh, sorry, make, break, and create things. Um, so wrapping up, I'd like to leave you to remember those two concepts, to network and create. Try it out, it might not work for you, but that's great because in that you've learned something about yourself and how you learn and how you operate. So it's been a pleasure speaking, um, thanks for listening for my English and my terrible Australian accent, but um, yeah, it's really a pleasure. So if you have any questions, more than happy to answer. Thank you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you Oliver for the speech. Okay, uh, jadi kalau ada yang ingin bertanya mungkin pada Oliver bisa sampaikan pertanyaannya. Ini eh, menarik loh ini topik ini kan tentang berkembang up oh, ada uh, there's one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Handi Tadukarnia. Uh, before I give you a question, can I take picture with you? Thank you. Oliver sudah menjelaskan bahwa salah satu hal yang perlu kita fokuskan adalah tentang created atau uh, membuat sesuatu hal yang baru gitu kan. Tapi permasalahan terkadang di uh, benak kita bersama ketika ingin memulai itu nggak tahu harus mulai dari mana. Kemudian ketika sudah mau ingin memulai pun nggak uh, ada bekal ataupun modal yang pasti dari uh, kita untuk memulai apa gitu. Karena banyak dari kita kalangan generasi milenial yang berpikiran sebenarnya skill saya tuh apa gitu kan. Kemudian e, bingung setelah lulus tuh mau jadi apa gitu. Jadi kalau dari segi e, e, Bang Oliver, dia kan e, secara basically itu punya, punya background orang tua ataupun keluarga yang sudah bisa dibilang mau, bisa memfasilitasi itu gitu kan. Terus bagaimana dengan dengan kami yang masih kebingungan uh, setelah kuliah ngapain gitu? 
Uh, sekian dari saya, terima kasih. Uh, so do you want to answer it first or do you really want to collect? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I will explain. Uh, so she was asking about the part of create. Uh, so uh, most of us here uh, want to create stuff. Uh, there is a thought in our heads uh, that we don't know where to start. We don't know how to start everything. And uh, even when we did know where to start, uh, we don't have the resources or the material to do it. So uh, how uh, do we do for us who don't have the means to start creating to do it? Sure, that's a really good, really good question. Is that working? Um, so yeah, that's a really good um, one. And very understandable because um, there, there are definitely you can have limitations which can sort of hinder being able to create. Um, I, I did say at the end to not maybe make something digital, but like everyone, most of you guys have a smartphone, I'm sure. Um, and these are incredibly powerful and you can do a lot on that. You can take amazing photos, you can code on a smartphone, um, you can do Photoshop, you can do anything. So like the amazingly powerful tools in the pocket, um, in your pocket. So, so think about how you can leverage that technology and power um, in sort of a unique and creative way. So that, that's what I'd probably say, yeah. Thanks for your question. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. Next, ada yang bertanya lagi? Huh? Oh, uh, explain the speech first. Uh, Oke, okay. uh, mungkin saya jelasin dulu ya, menjelaskan ulang lagi ya apa tadi uh, speech dari Oliver tadi ya. Uh, jadi pada dasarnya ada dua kunci utama untuk uh, mereka ingin berkembang di luar dari universitas ya. Tadi ada network dan ada create. Network ya kita pasti tahu semua kita kita buat koneksi, buat jaringan, berhubung dengan orang-orang lain gitu ya. Tapi ada satu hal yang perlu diingat dari koneksi, yaitu koneksi itu dua arah. Jadi kita bukan kita membuat koneksi itu bukan berpikiran apa untungnya buat saya gitu, tapi apa yang bisa saya lakukan untuk berkembang. Jadi jangan berpikirnya egois, jangan mikirnya saya buat koneksi untuk memajukan saya saja sendiri. Tapi kita juga harus mendukung dan mem memajukan koneksi kita juga gitu. Jadi jangan berpikiran egois untuk koneksi ya. Dan yang kedua itu create, create untuk menciptakan ya. Jadi ciptakan apapun gitu. Tadi Oliver sendiri juga bilang jangan ta jangan takut gagal gitu. Ya. Ciptakan apa yang kita mau. Gak perlu takut nanti gagal lah atau nggak sukses atau nanti bakal rugi atau apa. Ya karena uh, kegagalan itu juga uh, bukan hal yang buruk ya. Kegagalan itu uh, salah satu langkah untuk menuju kesuksesan. Jadi Ciptakan apapun yang kalian mau gitu, mau fisik, jualan, atau kayak mungkin digital tadi seperti yang jelaskan Oliver, menggunakan HP kalian juga berguna banget gitu. Kalian bisa membuat video mungkin, atau mungkin programming, atau kalian bisa apapun. Intinya jangan takut untuk, ber untuk jangan takut berusaha gitu ya. Ciptakan apa yang kita, kalian mau gitu, dan jika gagal, bisa menjadi ilmu untuk kalian gitu ya. Itu kesimpulan tadi dari Oliver. Ada yang ingin bertanya mungkin? atau kesempatan berfoto <laughs> tapi naik dulu ya jangan minta foto aja <laughs> ini yang semester 6 kan mau lulus itu atau semester 4 ada juga kan dia banyak Ya, dalam Indonesia juga nggak apa-apa kok. Nanti bisa di translate tadi juga kan bahasa Indonesia kan pertanyaannya. Ayo.
Anyone ayo, yang mau bertanya mungkin? Atau mungkin yang nolendism ada tak pertanyaan? Belum. Ya bertanya. Kesempatan ya. Oke, okay, ya. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, abang. <laughs> tanya nih kan ketika kita ingin memperluas koneksi dari luar kampus itu biasanya kita mengikuti kita seperti volunteer maga mengikuti kursus untuk menambah skill nah itu tuh biasanya saya sendiri merasakan kayak susah untuk membagikan waktu dengan baik gitu sehingga kayak bentrok gitu waktunya nah kalau menurut abang Oliver untuk membagikan waktu gitu tuh seperti kayak kayak mana ya memanage waktu dengan baik gitu oke terima kasih Thank you. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih pertanyaannya ya. So uh, Oliver, uh, she was asking about uh, how to manage time because uh, especially for the higher uh, years, they they have uh, internship or independent study and things like that, and they have chance to do connection, right? But uh, sometimes uh, they don't know how to uh, divide their time. So uh, from you personally, how do you uh, manage your time? to make sure you have time for both connection and study. Sure, thank you for the question. Really good, um, good one. So yeah, time management is very difficult. I, I've done university and it, it, it can be really challenging. And I think in terms of that create one, um, you want to try and create something that you enjoy, something you're passionate about. I guess the whole point of it is that you shouldn't, it shouldn't be like a chore. It should be something you enjoy. Um, and if you frame it like that, rather than it's like homework or it's something I, I need to do, then it'll be easier to do maybe on your day off university or in your holidays. Um, and even better, perhaps you can collaborate with some of your friends or your classmates. So then it, it's something you do as a social activity. Um, so just try and frame it differently from university being like a chore to something which you enjoy and something which you will take the time. because. I know we, you can all be busy at university, but you'll still have some free time every now and then. And so um, if you can sort of use that and, and have, make the most of it in a fun way and create something fun, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, uh, thank you for the answer, Oliver. Jadi uh, kuncinya ya untuk tadi time management tuh, uh, uh, networking dan creating ini jangan dilihat sebagai sebuah pekerjaan ya atau suatu hal yang harus dilakukan gitu tapi uh, suatu hal yang harus dienjoy gitu jadi have fun aja jangan mikirnya kayak pekerjaan rumah gitu atau deadline dan lain sebagainya ya jadi uh, have fun enjoy jangan terlalu dipikirin gitu ya dan ya pasti ya untuk uh, free time nya nanti kan kalau kayak setelah kuliah dan lain sebagainya ada waktu kosong gitu itu yang kalian gunakan untuk manage kayak tadi itu untuk networking dan create tadi. Ada lagi yang bertanya? Oh, di Zoom ya? Bentar, uh, mata saya buruk soalnya. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, from Indah Lestari. Oke, misalnya di Bangun Transit Tentu kita harus memiliki modal agar kita membangun transit yang kita akan membuat kegiatan 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 yang
Okay, uh, thank you for the question and the Zoom study. So uh, the question was, I think I'm going off this. Uh, so when we create, uh, we do networking, we want to connect with other people, uh, you said that we have, uh, it's a two-way street, right? So we gi uh, they give something to us and we give something to them. But uh, what happens when uh, we don't feel worthy about ourselves? We think that there's nothing that we can give to them. Uh, how do we uh, overcome that thought? Sure, that's a really good question, and thank you for everyone um, tuning into Zoom um, and answering all these, asking all these great questions. So I think it sort of you, goes back to this idea of first considering what can you give, and every single one of you will have something you can give. And I think you underestimate yourself if you say, I'm not worthy, and, um, and I've felt that in the past. And I'm not saying you would go and ask, approach um, Elon Musk and try and network with him, because perhaps you can't give him something at the moment, but later down the track you could. So it, it's sort of networking, it's a, it's a long process, and it first starts with considering what can you give. It could be like a hobby you really like, and then framing that, and someone else might be interested in that. Um, so don't underestimate yourself, I guess. That's the biggest lesson. Um, and yeah, I'm sure you, you, everyone has something valuable you can give in a networking scenario, but you know, it, it's, nothing's going to happen overnight in that sort of context. It's a long, long game. Thank you. Uh, jadi, uh, jika kalian merasa uh, kalian tuh tidak ada nilai harganya ya, misalnya nggak tahu kayak, apa yang bisa kalian berikan kepada orang untuk dalam networking dan sebagainya, ya uh, pastinya setiap dari kita punya satu hal yang kita bagus ya, kita nggak mungkin Bah punya kualitas apapun yang baik gitu, walaupun hal-hal kayak hobi gitu, bahkan hal seperti game gitu, atau misalnya uh, hobi seperti K-pop lain sebagainya itu juga termasuk salah satu uh, dari uh, hal yang bisa kita gunakan, itu salah satu modal kita. Bahkan dari hobi pun kita juga bisa buat networking gitu, kita bisa buat koneksi misalnya uh, komunitas uh, penyuka game dan lain sebagainya, itu juga termasuk networking. Nah dari situlah baru mungkin kalian bisa membentuknya untuk menjadi network yang lebih berguna gitu ya. Dan juga Networking itu uh, tidak akan jadi dalam sehari dua hari ya, itu proses yang panjang. Sama seperti belajar juga nggak bisa kayak belajar satu hari terus langsung pintar gitu. Jadi ada banyak fase, ada banyak tahapnya. Jadi uh, ya jangan berpikir terlalu rendah ya, jangan terlalu merasa dirinya tidak berharga atau tidak berguna atau tidak memiliki kemampuan apapun gitu. Karena setiap dari kita pasti ada kemampuan yang kita bisa tonjolkan gitu. Itu jawabannya. Ya. Okay, I think uh, one last question. Ini pertanyaan beda. Ya? Okay, another question, there is Zoom. Okay, uh, good afternoon, my name is Mareza from Nananana, what a good for me for the company. I said for new company because in the community, I knew only because my community, we need to approach more about. I think it's more about the previous one with the, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, again a really great question and I think it's probably uh, back to more Andrew's speech but um, I think any ways that you can think if, through your degree you can contribute to community projects um, is fantastic um, and finding businesses like Nico and Shambadak who are willing um, and it sort of goes back to the other Zoom question which is not underselling yourself. You, you all have unique value which you can give in such a context um, and you might just be an undergraduate naval architect but um, I'm sure there's many ways you could contribute to. Um, so yeah, don't sell yourself short and, and try to get involved as best as possible. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Yeah. I think that's cukup ya, empat pertanyaan aja. Atau ada yang mau bertanya lagi, satu terakhir? Oke, okay, last one. <laughs> Selamat siang, perkenalkan nama saya nanti lama. Perkenalkan nama saya Novia Siskaramadani dari jurusan Ilmu Administrasi Negara Angkatan 2020. 
Jadi pertanyaan dari saya, kita berbicara tentang keajaiban yang ada di eh, keajaiban pada masa depan. Pertanyaan dari saya itu eh, masa depan yang cemerlang itu bisa kita katakan sebuah keajaiban. Nah, kemudian juga masa depan yang cemerlang itu juga bisa kita katakan sebagai takdir yang datang kepada diri kita sendiri. Uh, sebagai kita ketahui uh, bahwa takdir itu, takdir tiap orang itu berbeda. Uh, mungkin ada yang mendapatkan takdir baik dan takdir buruk. Nah, uh, menurut Bang Oliver, itu bagaimana cara kita untuk menjemput keajaiban yang baik di masa depan? Terima kasih. Oke, okay, terima kasih pertanyaannya. Uh, saya boleh minta foto juga? Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Just take picture with you. Okay, uh, her question was, uh, how do I say it? So, uh, it's about the future, uh, 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 a bright future. So, uh, a bright future is something that is uh, what we want, right? It's uh, magical and, well, it's very good for us. And a future like that, usually it's tied with fate, right? And sometimes we think that there are good fates and bad fates and things like that. So, uh, uh, what do you think about what we should do to maybe get a good fate for our bright future like that? Is that a clear question? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the future, right, it's tied with fate. Right? And there are sometimes good fate and bad fate. So uh, according to you, how, uh, how can we attain that good fate? What, what, what things that we, may, we might need to do to get that good fate? Sure, that's again a, a tricky question and thank you for asking. I think in terms of that, you don't want to approach it always thinking that things are going to be good because they're not going to be with university and having those setbacks and that, that failure is good because it goes back to the whole idea of growth. It's not a vertical linear path, it has twists and turns. So accepting it as it comes and, and I, I think trying not to overthink things, being present creating things, networking present. Um, and because when you try and put too much thought into planning your future, it's really important to have a plan. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, but you put a, often a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself. And um, there are sort of some shortcomings of that because you aren't present and, and you don't network and you don't create in the present. So um, yeah, try try be present with your studies and. And, and don't put excessive pressure on yourself in the future. A plan is really important, um, but, it, but it shouldn't dictate everything with your studies. So yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, jadi, uh, tentang masa depan ya, dan sebagainya itu, uh, ya, jangan terlalu banyak dipikirin ya, jangan terlalu overthinking tentang masa depan itu. Uh, ya, emang, uh, rencana itu mikirkan masa depan itu uh, bagus ya dan memang harus kita punya rencana tapi jangan sampai overthinking juga jangan throwback mikir masa depan sampai akhirnya kita uh, sampai lupa dengan yang ada sekarang gitu ya dan tentang tadi uh, takdir baik dan buruk sebagainya gitu ya uh, tadi seperti yang dia bilang sama Oliver ya uh, hal baik dan buruk tuh uh, dulu pada akhirnya bakal lihat dia baik juga gitu jika misalnya ada kegagalan atau misalnya yang buruk dari kita uh, anggapnya itu sebagai ya tadi uh, suatu langkah untuk ke uh, diri kita lebih baik gitu ya untuk pertumbuhan kita karena tadi seperti bilang juga pertumbuhan tuh nggak hanya ke atas saya gitu nggak nggak jalan tuh nggak lurus ke depan tapi berliku-liku kita kadang bakal belok ke kiri atau ke kanan dan sebagainya itu termasuk dari langkah dari untuk 
tumbuh dan berkembang gitu. Jadi kalau memang terjadi hal yang buruk, anggap itu salah satu langkah untuk memajukan diri kita untuk menjadi diri kita lebih baik. Seperti itu jawabannya. Uh, yeah, thank you for, yeah, for the question everyone. Thank you for a liberty. Uh, I think that's all ya. Yeah. Uh, udah habis juga kayak waktunya. So, uh, saya udah kesimpulan ya, udah dijelasin juga kan ya. Uh, so, kayaknya nggak perlu lagi saya jelasin ulang. Kita tadi dua kunci utama, networking and creating ya. Uh, dengan dua itu kan insya Allah bisa tumbuh berkembang di luar dari universitas. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih untuk perhatiannya. Thank you and good afternoon everyone. Thank you Oke, okay, thank you for sharing uh, Oliver Fernandison and Mr. Andrew Fernandison. Oke, okay, give applause for our speaker and moderator today. Acara kuliah umum dan sharing knowledge telah selesai. Kita masuki acara terakhir yaitu penyerahan sertifikat kepada narasumber dan moderator kita pada hari ini. Kami mohon kesediaan kembali Bapak Rektor Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji, Profesor Dr. Agung Damar Shakti, SPI DEA, kepada Mr. Andrew Fernand Dixon, Oliver Fernand Dixon, Bapak Boni Irawan MPD, dan Aksan Sina Raka Shakti untuk mengambil tempat. Demikianlah rangkaian acara penanda tanganan naskah kerjasama Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji dan Mitra dalam pengembangan Mari Sosiopreneurship serta kuliah umum pada hari ini. Kami segenap panitia mengucapkan terima kasih yang sebesar-besarnya dan mohon maaf bila ada kekurangan. Hujan renyai angin utara, anak nelayan main berseri. Tak terasa sudah di penghujung acara, waktunya MC undur diri. Bila dibelah anaknya ikan, sudah bersih dan juga basuh. Silap dan salah mohon dimaafkan. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.